In the early 2000s, Devin Grayson wrote a series of Titan comics I really enjoyed. I talked about that last round, but suffice to say it was a solid time for the Titans, nicely bringing back team members from every era, a slew of fun villains along the way, and adventure at every turn. Near the end of her run, she shared writing duties with Jay Farber, who took over the series and is the focus of today. Let's see if his era can make the grade. So for this round, we are covering 20 issues written by Farber, followed by 9 issues written by Tom Payer that close out the series. We'll be talking about both since I don't really find much of a difference in terms of the quality of the books, they share some artists and merit the same grade. To put it less kindly, I just do not enjoy this era and don't want to talk about these comics any more than I have to. Problems that, to be fair, started in the Grayson era just get much worse, and it gets to the point I just found these comics kind of unbearable. Let's break down why, starting with what I think most defines this era. See, over time, more and more civilians start living in the Titan's Tower during this volume of Titan's comics. It's not a bad idea, if anything, it's a very good idea. The tower is large and vast. It feels pretty wasteful and silly for it to exclusively house a handful of young superheroes. At the very least, a bunch of support staff and contacts that maintain the team and this infrastructure. That makes a lot of sense to me in any narrative. In the days of the Devin Grayson comics, it is a feeling that they actually did a pretty good job of conveying. Roy's daughter Lian was living there, we had the scientist working with Cyborg, we'd meet Arjun's parents, and people would show up from Star Labs, that sort of thing. It really made the world feel lived in, and nicely made the Titan's Tower feel like a real home. Then Grayson left, and pretty soon we were starting to get different characters added into the mix. Who, uh, okay, I have to admit, I have no memory of any of these characters that I can actually tell you without looking it up. Normally I can write out most, if not all, of a review first before I have to go back to the comics and check them for details, make sure I got everything right, that sort of thing. It is always telling when I have to start double checking stuff immediately because it means that even though I've very recently read every single one of these comics, they haven't done much to stick in my memory. We meet these DEO orphans who are escaped metahumans that wind up living in the tower. There's nothing wrong with this idea, but it takes away so much focus from the main team, while I can't tell you a single thing about any of these characters. There's barely anything to them, yet they take up panel after panel with their discussions about whatever, and stick around for the majority of Fairbur's books. Around that, there is another Donna Troy story that confuses her continuity even more, and Payer's books have some promise but just feel kind of busy and all over the place. I almost want to call them amateurish, or at least really lacking the polish of other Titans comics. A big part of that is Barry Kitson is behind a lot of this artwork. I'm not a huge fan of this style, and I really didn't connect with a lot of the artwork of this era in particular. And to be fair to Kitson, he's only one of many who worked on these books, so it's not just him that feels a little lacking. It's hard for me to pinpoint what is wrong with the art in these books other than it feels like one of the many comics I've seen from the early 2000s and kind of all over the last 30 years of lower level indie comic books. The art feels like it is in a bit of an awkward transition from the highly stylized and exaggerated nature of the 90s as it moves into the more realistic and higher resolution nature of modern comic book art. Because of that, a lot of these images fall right into that uncanny valley for me. I don't love the look at all, and it really leaves me uninterested in these stories. Now, obviously that's super subjective, it's my own personal reaction to it, but there it is. As for the stories themselves, to be fair, they are a little bit stronger than the art and characters. There's some stuff with Deathstroke and Cheshire, the occasional tie-in or crossover cameo, nothing extremely notable or really anything that stood out to me, just the sort of normal comic book stuff that was at least passable. What's remarkable to me is you have all these aliens and superpowered themed content going on, yet I can't believe how dull it can all feel when we just keep getting these low stakes character beats around it and rough looking moments that keep holding it back. Check out this cool looking panel from issue 39. I might be critical of Kitson, but this big team shot looks awesome. Let's look at the dialogue a little more closely though. I just want to give you fair warning, we've had one hell of a week, so if you don't surrender, we'd quite enjoy beating you up. We have this rare moment of artwork really looking good in these comics, and the dialogue kind of ruins it for me. 
Your mileage might vary for tolerating this line. This is going to be very subjective, like I said with the art, but I personally found this very wordy and a little juvenile. There has to be a line somewhere in the land of maturity between Nightwing saying <laughs> Batman and him threatening to beat up the bad guys like he was in a Saturday morning cartoon. This series is called The Titans. It is kind of implied and often in the past would try to tackle more mature content, but here under these two writers it really feels like this series is taking a huge step back in its ambitions. Anyways, if we keep reading on this issue, we see the Titans squaring off against this team of villains called Dark Nemesis, who are barely interesting or worth elaborating on. I just want to point out that the action kind of muddles through these two groups of superheroes blasting each other, and then at the end of this comic, things just kind of go out on this very anticlimactic note. These Dark Nemesis guys were actually from the Dan Jurgens era, and boy do they just not have a good track record of appearing in decent comics. I think issue 39 nicely represents what is wrong with this era. Neither the art nor the writing feel like they are quite working for this series. Everything is just kind of off and wrong. I didn't enjoy these books much at all, they feel morose in their tone and sensibilities, and it was like picking teeth reading through them in comparison to the way I just flew through Devin Grayson's comics. It's kind of funny, but I almost immediately identified this era as Titans Falls, the slow death of the first true series to call itself Titans, with nothing else to show for it. This series had so much potential, but once Grayson left, it really feels like it amounted to garbage. Oh yes, it's bad. This is as bad as we've gotten before, and about as bad as it gets in general for the Teen Titans. A huge drop in comparison to anything we've talked about so far. But that's what's going to happen if you don't have good stories, and I don't enjoy the art. A comic just doesn't have value if it can't work on either level. This era is one of the worst and most disappointing. Honestly, the more I have checked out of DC during this time period, the more I feel like this is one of the worst things they were publishing at the time. It's just so goddamn boring. The stories are just so forgettable. The action is just so lame. These comics are lucky to not be getting the F grade. Maybe one day, after there are some more eras in the history of the Teen Titans, they will actually get pushed down to that. But for now, there is at least enough small moments in random issues here and there where an interesting idea might present itself where a character I really like gets to have a cool moment, that this is going with D-. But make no mistake, this is a low point for the franchise. These books sucked and new energy was desperately called for. It shouldn't surprise anyone to learn that Titans were cancelled on issue 50 based on everything I've just said, and it's not actually a terrible record considering Dan Jurgens only lasted about half that long. But the series hardly feels like it stuck the landing either. We'll talk about what happens next when Jeff Johns takes over the series and reboots it as Teen Titans, and be ready for that one because I have very big feelings on that particular series. Before we close out, I do want to make something clear I haven't quite found the space for yet, aside from the usual business around these opinions just being opinions, which I hope I've made pretty clear in this review. It's all pretty subjective when we are judging art, and I do have a lot of sympathy for artists like Barry Kitson and the writers Jay Ferber and Tom Payer. It's hard to take over a series mid-run, and it would have been especially difficult to do so with Devin Grayson's Titans. Her comics were so ambitious and full of characters and life. It is so easy to get caught up in her books that not being able to sustain that for an additional 30 issues is actually pretty understandable. I don't really fault any of the people working on the behind-the-scenes comics in this particular case, especially because I get the impression these books weren't made under the most editorially friendly of circumstances. I don't know that for a fact, it's hard to tell and I didn't actually look this up, but these books feel a lot more rushed in my eyes rather than being made with incompetence or stupidity. Tight deadlines and low flexibility from DC Comics would explain a lot about the unpolished nature of the scripting and artwork, especially considering you don't usually break into the comic book industry unless you have something to offer. I don't really know Kitson, Ferber, and Payer that well to make a definitive statement on their talent as individuals. Although, that being said, the more I learn about being a writer and working in the comic book industry, the more it seems to be more about who you know rather than who you are, so 
perhaps some of these criticisms are indeed merited. And on those sobering thoughts, I think I'll leave you all. Next time, it's Jeff Johns, like I was saying, and I'm just so excited for that one. Stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.